Hey guys, this is Gary. Honestly, I did not want to make this video because there's really not much concrete evidence out there right now for the next generation R36 Nissan GTR. Whether Nissan is even working on one or not, they've been very tight-lipped. It makes the R36 GTR sound like a mythical creature at the moment. I'll go through the rumors and statements made by Nissan officials in this video to give you an idea on what the next generation GTR might be like. Let's start by talking about the release date. It was rumored that we might see an R36 GTR concept around 2020 and a production model would eventually be after that, which means the current R35 GTR will be sold for quite a bit longer since we won't be seeing a production R36 GTR anytime soon. The next generation GTR will draw inspiration from the Nissan Concept 2020 Vision Gran Turismo, most likely just the front corporate V-Motion grille which they've already implemented to the 2017 GTR, and probably an updated version of the traditional round rear taillights. The Concept 2020 is actually reported to be mid-engined, so it doesn't really fit the GTR's front engine all-wheel drive layout. Nissan has also stated that the GTR will always be a 2 plus 2 coupe. Pricing is estimated to be around the $150,000 price range. I'd say closer to $200,000 if it's supposed to have hypercar performance. To be honest, unless the performance meets or exceeds expectations, good luck selling this car at that price range. This will most likely be a low volume selling car. Anything above $150,000 gets you into the status and prestige category. I don't think Nissan falls into this area. We're talking a new and maybe even a used Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari, McLaren, and Audi. Nissan is making it unaffordable to potential GTR buyers and enthusiasts at this price range. Do you think this price would be ridiculous for a hybrid Nissan GTR? The R36 GTR is supposed to receive autonomous driving technology. It would be able to drive itself, show you the best driving line to take on a track, and achieve the best lap time. Talk about no driver involvement. I can already see a lawsuit waiting to happen, so I just don't see this happening yet, and it may just be a rumor. Nissan Vice President Andy Palmer has already told us to expect a hybrid electric powertrain for the next GTR. The engine was earlier rumored to be derived from the VRX30A used in the front-wheel drive Le Mans race car. Its 3-liter engine produces 500 horsepower with 750 horsepower electric motors for a total of 1,250 horsepower. I'm not quite sure how reliable this engine will be because it had no development time since the Le Mans race car was pulled out early in the season by Nissan. It's not even used on any of their cars at the moment. Nissan does currently have the 400 horsepower VR30 DDTT found in the Infiniti Q50 or Q60. It's a 3 liter engine with direct fuel injection for fuel efficiency which would meet the stricter gas mileage and emissions requirements of the future. The next GTR might use this engine instead but I think it's underpowered at 400 horsepower so they may increase it if it's to be used. The VR30 DDTT is already part of the VR engine family, so it might make sense, but my guess is as good as yours. What do you think? Should the GTR use the Le Mans or the Q50 engine? Now onto the hybrid technology. Nissan registered a trademark application for R-Hybrid. This does support a hybrid system for the next generation GTR. There's been no power figures for the electric motors, but fingers crossed it's even close to 200 horsepower. Nissan is collaborating with Williams Advanced Engineering, the technology offshoot of Williams F1, to supply Nissan with the hybrid technology in the form of energy recovery and storage, electric motor traction control, electronic control, and most likely a KERS hybrid system. I tell you what, this thing looks like the Millennium Falcon, so it should be awesome. The issue with a hybrid system is weight. Nissan stated that it should be lighter than the current GTR, which weighs around 3,900 pounds but I think it'll be a challenge since that's without a hybrid system. There are several ways to reduce the weight though. The current VR30 DDTT is supposed to be lighter and more compact. Power storage from larger capacitors instead of batteries will be lighter. Nissan is most likely going to include aluminum and carbon fiber also to reduce the weight. The transmission is rumored to be a seven speed dual clutch, so one extra gear from the current six speed in the R35 GTR. 
performance wise, there was a 2014 article that stated the GTR was going to have 800 horsepower plus, do a 0 to 60 in 2.7 seconds, and finish the quarter mile in 10 seconds with a top speed of 211 miles per hour. That should work for 2020 or later because other super or hypercar manufacturers will be around that power range at that time. The performance would be similar to hypercars it was benchmarked with, so it would be good news. But this is just a rumor, so it may not even be true at all. That's all I have for rumors and speculations. From my perspective, I'm not really a fan of a hybrid system since they're really not required for a performance car. The NSX recently came out, but I can tell you guys right now, it's pretty much only a memory now because it can't put up the performance numbers with a hybrid system. The gasoline-powered McLaren 720S supposedly provides P1-like performance without the hybrid system or price. A hybrid system just overcomplicates things now since the technology is not there yet. The challenge will also happen when you start modifying because the internal combustion engine and the electric motors would need to be tuned and synced together to balance the different outputs. Nissan was rumored to have ran into this issue when they were trying to incorporate it into the GTR's Atezza all-wheel drive system. They also failed with the hybrid Le Mans car. This might be the main reason why the R36 Nissan GTR is taking so long to appear. With upcoming emissions and fuel mileage requirements, a hybrid system may be one way to meet them before going all electric. Let me know what you think about the next generation GTR being a hybrid in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one.